Hello friends, it is that time again with that Ericsson. It is January 8th, 2017, and today we are talking the lore of Crowfall. Now, before we get started, the lore is limited, but we will cover what we know so far. Also, it will help us cover the three factions, so to speak. We have Order, Chaos, and Balance. Now, we don't know yet how these choices will affect gameplay. Uh, it's pretty well known that not all campaigns will use faction-based systems or scoring. However, as mentioned in my campaign video, the possibilities are endless for the campaign system, so we will see. Uh, I really think PP PvP games need a three-faction system, similar to Dark Ages of Camelot and Secret World, uh, to, to work well, so I look forward to seeing how it goes. Anyway, let's blaze through a lore crash course of the Pantheon of Crowfall. There is a beginning and an end, and this beginning is Valken, the all-father and creator of all. He rode the eternal dragon till it pissed him off, and he ripped it in two forming Laisa, the Queen of Worms, and Ymir, the King of Snakes. He ties her together and forms the heavens. Her gleaming scales are the stars, her breath the wind. If not enough, he steals her unborn egg and throws it up as the moon. He steals poor Ymir's fire and throws it up to make the sun. With Ymir totally emasculated, Valken then sits on him as a dragon throne. Valken has three kitties. Two boys, Arkan and Cain. One girl, Maeve. Arkan has the sweet inheritance of the sun. Meanwhile, Brother Cain, pretty pissed, thinks he deserves the sun since he's a super blacksmith, has to settle for the moon. Maeve, goddess of war and oceans, hates them both because she feels they got the good property and she's stuck with oceans and Baltic Sea uh, Avenue. She's also not fond of Gaia, her half-sister who is married to Archon thanks to the All-Father playing matchmaker. Archon and Gaia give birth to the race of men. Mankind copulates like bunnies and leads to civilization and the Elkin race and Prince Deorian. The Sky Hunter. Sadly, this couple was not built on love, so it's not going so well. Gaia, the giver of life, is mother to Sibeli and daughter of Yaga, Valken's sister. She is smack in the middle of the Trinity. Sadly, Gaia dies. Who did it? Why? We don't know. Uh, everyone has different takes on it, but there is no clear proof. Gaia's children, the trees, drank her milkshake and become the trees of life that semi-protect us from the hunger. Gaia's mom, Yaga, looks to be a good target, being she's depicted as an old hag, all skilled in magic and, know and knowing things. She's also associated with death more like a collector. She's heard to appear during mortals' death and hears their dying lifetime of memories and puts them in a little book to judge the mortals. Gaia's daughter is the virgin goddess Sibeli, known for starting life, portrayed as a beautiful woman who is naive, flirty, and self-absorbed, also with a bit of a temper to boot. In the end, though, she's a nice gal, generous and sweet. Lots of mortals will worship her. Sibeli starts the cycle of life, Gaia grows in, and Yaga comes in and snatches up the dying memories. The other offspring of Gaia and Archon is the Orion. However, Brother Cain, always a jerk, kills the Orion in an apparent trial by combat. Archon wants revenge. Belkin has one more sibling other than Yaga. That is Kronos, the Lord of Time, the creator of the First Age. He is faceless and formless. When Gaia died, the heavens rang out and the moon was shattered. Behind it stood the, the shadow of Kronos. Did he do it? He is the father to Malachi, Prince of Shadows, and doesn't seem to care for his singing and talking so much as he ripped out his tongue. Malachi has many names. The Voiceless God, Spinner of Lies. He is the patron god of traitors and spies. Malachi managed to snatch another egg from Laisa and raise it another god of chaos, Zelenia, the daughter of snakes. Zelenia is cold and calculated and sticks to the darkness of night. She is beautiful and uses the beauty to seduce mortals and to get what she wants from them. The last two are not as important, starting with balance goddess Ilara, mother of cats. Meow. Ilara is the true incarnation of neutral, mainly because she cares about nothing, not even the death of Gaia or her siblings. She's a powerful sorceress known to break the planes. She studies the beyond and knows of ways to traverse the universe and maybe even deal with the hunger, hence giving her a lot of popular acolytes. Finally, Crowfall wouldn't be Crowfall without crows. The hero is known to be the very first crow. He carried the banner of the Allfather in the War of the Dragons. However, for some reason, the gods cursed him with immortality. Whatever he did was long forgotten in the thousands of lifetimes he has led. He is a plaything of the gods. He awakens each new lifetime with no memory of his past lives. That is, until he dies, where he remembers everything, a cruel trick of the gods before he dies, cursing them, only to be born again to fight for the gods' amusement once more. Okay, guys, well, that is a brief, quick crash course of the lore of Crowfall and the Pantheon of the Gods. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I've been delayed with my skill video mainly because the the testing is only up on the weekends and my weekends are a little crazy right now, but I am working on the updates. Uh, unfortunately, the night was changed, so I'm going to update the night video uh, with some information and I'll get started on the other classes right away. Um, so hopefully we have that up for you guys soon. Once again, it is that Ericsson. And until next time, thank you, friends.